Blog Talk Radio. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Uncontrolled Opposition on Blog Talk Radio. I'm Keith Camp Schaefer, also known as Elijah1757, and I'll be your host this evening here on Blog Talk Radio. And as always, we'll do my best to bring you interesting and informative news and opinions, as well as valuable insights into world events from an end-time biblical perspective. I thank you for tuning in live now or listening to a recorded broadcast, and please visit my blogs at www.uncontrolledopposition.com, all one word, as well as elijah1757.wordpress.com. You can also join my Uncontrolled Opposition Facebook group, which has an associated Uncontrolled Opposition Facebook page with interesting posts, comments, graphics, and photo albums. If you would like to contact me, my email address is listed at the bottom of the blogs. Again, thank you for tuning in, and please click the follow button if you would like to receive notifications for upcoming broadcasts. Welcome and glad to have you listening in. Hello, everyone, and glad to have you with us uh, or with me this evening. And I'd like to go ahead and get started. I sent out a notification earlier today that I was going to be dis- uh, discussing the uh, the tinnitus and uh, a warning about the uh, an increase in ELF waves. And what I'm experiencing myself, uh, I would say probably in the last uh, uh, probably – three to four weeks, a tremendous increase in the tinnitus. And um, it uh, it seemed like the first week, which was, I'm going to say, maybe a month ago, it was intermittent throughout the day. But one thing that I did notice is that when I woke up in the morning, that that that's when they were really uh, really hammering me with the tinnitus. And at that time, it was, um, like I said, about the first two or three weeks that it started or began, it seemed like it was only in one ear. And then um, it it gradually uh, got more intense and more frequent, and um, it's gone to both ears now. And it is uh, the majority of the day that I hear uh, the, the, the the ringing in the ear and the tinnitus. And um, there are times throughout the day where... You know, I, I do feel rather stressed or, or even depressed. And sometimes, uh, you know, when that tini- when that tinnitus is really hitting me and hammering me, then um, it's really uh, sometimes it, it tries to creep over into the uh, the overwhelming to where it's almost like a, you, you know it, I, I'm wanting to go into that despair and. Um, but it's yet to get it's yet to go over over to that territory uh, very much. But uh, so I do try to hold on to the scriptures that I have. I have a number of scriptures that I keep, uh, of course, you know, some of them in my mind, and then I have many accessible. I have a desktop uh, or a wallpaper on my computer that that is actually a list of uh, of scripture verses that that give me strength to endure some of these things that a lot of us TIs are going through. But um, I would like to uh, go ahead and just briefly give a summary to what organized stalking and electronic harassment is. And um, for because that is going to be a topic that I'm going to be talking about tonight and what I perceive as um, just looking at some news headlines and recognizing something that was going on in news headlines and of course, this is my opinion, and maybe not everyone would agree with this, but it's something that I have seen for a number of years, and I began documenting uh, what I am seeing, what I am seeing in the news headlines. But anyway, let's go ahead and just go ahead and, and get on into what organized stalking is, 
for anyone that listens to this broadcast that may not be familiar with organized stalking and electronic harassment. And um, but I just have this comment here that I wrote uh, on the Internet at a particular location that says, a particular area of interest of mine is the phenomenon known as organized stalking. This is something I began experiencing around 2008 and 2009. The complexity of this activity is vast, is vast, but suffice it to say that in the shadow of the Nazi police state and the cooperation of many naive, uh, quote, citizen informants, this modern-day community-based bullying and intimidation is the oppression of the unseen hand of corrupted governments. And so essentially what that is saying is that there is a vast, uh, well, it doesn't say vast, but there is a, a network, and it is vast, a network of uh, conspiring individuals that uh, are being brought into this network of covert stalkers and essentially persecutors who are attacking and assaulting individuals in society that have been uh, selected for this, this persecution, this stalking, and um, but it is sponsored by the government, and, um, and and so that's why that's why I say that it that it is the oppression of the unseen hand of corrupted governments, and as societies be, begin to break down, and governments begin to go from you know democracy and and what we have had historically here in uh, the freedom that we've had. And in, in here in America, in the USA, the uh, the fascist state, okay, the police state, and of course, you know, there's many many people that are talking about that on the alternative media, and uh, but that's not a topic that I want to address right now because yeah, that's a topic to unto uh, itself. The second comment I have here is gang stalking is defined by the covert and systematic psychological and physical attack and assault by a group or network of, quote, in-the-know conspirators against a designated person or target in an attempt to destroy their life by collusion and with, with subtle intimidation and torture. And, of course, nowadays this involves the use of electronic weapons, directed energy weapons, and um, just, just a, an array of different technologies mind control technologies, remote neural monitoring, synthetic telepathy, uh, the list goes on. It just goes on and on and on, coming more and more uh, prevalent and pervasive. And, um, and on, on the plus side, uh, the more and more people are waking up to the reality of this that are not, they're, they're not involved with it and they're not yet victims of it. And, one thing I do like to emphasize is that it's really important for us to inform people of the dangers of getting involved in this and to not fall for the deception when some neighborhood agent, uh, some neighborhood watch group, or a fusion center representative or whoever it is comes knocking on your door or meets you in the marketplace or wherever it may be and uh, starts a, a spiel a line saying that uh, you know we have a particular person in our neighborhood that uh, the police have identified as a drug dealer, uh, an alcoholic, a, a womanizer, uh, a prostitute, uh, a pedophile, uh, a, uh, a, a, a whatever it may be. Okay, but, um, but that's how they start. Okay, they start with character assassination and slander, and and then they start appealing to the person's um, I guess civic nature or even patriotic nature and saying things like, well, you know, I know that you're an upstanding citizen and you're well respected in the community. And, uh, you know, I've talked to that, you know, they might even find out who several of your friends or their friends are and what have you. And so they go on into saying that, um, that, you know, we think that we could use your help in this, working with us in this community and with the police to protect our children and protect our community and what have you. And the next thing you know, this person has been duped and deceived into getting into this organization, and it is a, it is a cult. And, um, and once you get into a cult, it's very difficult to get out without, uh, without consequences, uh, just like Freemasonry and um, covens and 
and what have you. So, but um, so anyway, let's go ahead and go on in. What I did today is looking at the Drudge Report. I noticed that there were some headlines on there, and this is something that I've talked about before. In that, I believe, and we understand that the global elite and powers that be and nowadays uh, are very uh, occult-oriented, and they use a lot of the hermetic um, technology, or not the technologies, but the techniques and what have you, you know, like the second law of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, law of hermetics is as above, so below, and the fourth law is the principle of duality, and so what is going on is a lot of the things that we're seeing in the media, news headlines, and and events that have different names and titles, and even the what we hear the our leaders speaking and saying behind the microphone, a lot of these things have dual meanings. And so I was looking at the at Drudge Report today, and um, and of course that's one site that I've been watching for a number of years. Uh, because, see, well, he does the uh, what they call manually curating uh, to where he'll take headlines or news headlines and he'll edit them himself, uh, as you might be aware, and shorten them or, you know, highlight different words. And, of course, he uses quotes and and uh, boldface and, and red-colored fonts and all caps, size certain words, certain phrases within the title of these articles. And I believe, and this is my opinion, that I believe that, um, and it may not necessarily be him, but I believe that there are coded there are coded words within some of these headlines. And so, looking at the Drudge Report today, what I see is uh, one article. It says White House. Hold on, just a second. Let me switch glasses. I have to do this frequently for some reason. More lately, White House boasts. Tranquility of Global Community, and um, so I really didn't think a whole lot about that, except for I am, you know, when I view these things, I take into consideration what is going on in the world, you know, with the chemtrail spraying, the electromagnetic frequencies that are saturating our airwaves uh, throughout the world and all of our cities across our nation and around the world and how people's moods are being affected and, and how they're using this technology to drive uh, different agendas, uh, you know, to, to try to provoke people to, uh, to anger or to rage or you know, to committing some type of uh, offense where uh, a new law needs to be passed, where they want to try to use that for gun control or what have you. And... Um, so I looked at what he has in quotes, and, uh, of course, the, the word I recognize right there is tranquility, and it says White House boasts, White House boasts tranquility of global community. And so what are they saying, okay? What they're saying there is the, they're bragging about, I guess they're bragging about the peace that that is around the world, or that's maybe what they're trying, wanting to try to convey. I don't necessarily believe that it's true. I think it's the very opposite. But, uh, I mean, it's just, in my opinion, it's just propaganda, okay? And, and the second thing is, or the second title right here, it has Endless Wave, and it has that in all caps, and that's, that's, in, uh, that's in quote, in single quote. It says, Endless Wave across... Or endless wave floods across, and of course, all of this is related to the um, the immigration uh, thing that's going on right now with so many of the Central and South American uh, immigrants coming up across the border into America. So that's the that's the meaning of that on the surface. But what is the meaning behind this? What is the what is the dual meaning of these? Okay, and that's what I'm saying. And like I said, I'm you know I may be completely wrong about this, but I'm not afraid to conjecture because of dif- different things that I have seen in the past on this. And 
you know, this is like I said in you know, the a comment I made on Facebook, and uh, you know that this is a, a daring speculation on my part. But and I may, you know, I may be found out to be incorrect, and but I'll, I'm getting to that point here in a minute. But this endless wave, you know, so I'm thinking tranquility of global community, and I'm, I'm seeing another word that says endless wave, and of course us targeted individuals that are very familiar with the electromagnetic frequencies and the ELF waves and all of these different technologies that they're using to control people's minds and moods and uh, use for provo- provocation and, uh, and torture and things like that. So, you know, we kind of look at things through a different lens. We have kind of a filter to where everything that we view, it goes through another loop. It goes through another cycle, another interpretation, another analytic phase to see if there's something else there, or at least that's the way it is with me. And um, and so I see the those two things, which they could, you know, they could have, uh, just, uh, I mean, you're talking about wave, well, uh, I mean, frequency wave, okay, and then endless wave, and, you know, I was talking about the tinnitus that I'm going through and how that's increased, and and what I see is the mind control and what have you is increasing for me, the different types of torture, the heating up of uh, certain parts of my legs, in my body, my trouble concentrating and focusing, and so all of these things, I believe, are related to these weapons, these electronic weapons or directed energy weapons and what have you. So then on down it goes, uh, oh, and by the way, I have this information on on my website. It is, um, it's actually the top post or the latest post on my website uh, at uncontrolledopposition.com. And uh, so if you're listening to this right now and you have access to a computer or a browser, you can go ahead and go to that and just click on the, the first link there on uncontrolledopposition.com because I will I am uh, focusing on a number of uh, the photographs that I have uploaded that are related to tonight's message. And um, but let me go ahead and go on because I do have a lot really to try to cover here in just this half an hour. And uh, so let's see, I kind of forgot where I was at there. Oh, okay. yeah, I was still I was still on the Drudge Report. Down, the the next headline that he has, it, and it is also in quotes, is you ain't seen nothing yet. Okay? And, of course, see, not only, you know, am I tying this into what we targeted individuals are aware of as far as this technology and electromagnetic, electromagnetic frequencies and harp technology and Tesla and... and um, cell phone uh, towers and Gwen towers and, and all of these different things. But I'm also looking for clues that tie into what a number of reporters and journalists and activists and bloggers are saying about the potential for an upcoming false flag or an upcoming major event to usher in martial law or some kind of drastic change that the globalists are wanting to use to further their steps toward their one world, their new world order, totalitarian state. And I have seen a number of articles recently, and um, you know, on uh, on a, a website in particular that uh, that has a number of these articles is beforeitsnews.com, which you can check that out yourself, and. You know, I do see a number number of people that saying that we are kind of at a critical stage right now. You know, I mean, if you were looking at you know at a military term, you might say DEFCON five or DEFCON four, defense condition four, uh, alert level three or alert level four. You know, four out of five. And so I think that I think there is something that possibly I think we're very close to a, a major event, and I'm not the only one that's saying that. I'm one of many that's saying that right now, uh, but I, that's just another filter that I'm running this through. And so I see this headline that says, you ain't seen nothing yet. Well, you're exactly right. Yeah, we ain't seen nothing yet. And the next false flag, the next uh, 
uh, status or 9-11 uh, uh, range false flag, something of that magnitude at that level uh, that it's likely to happen is, is going to be what we're probably going to see. And, of course, a number of people you know, are talking uh, EMP, uh, electromagnetic pulse uh, uh, nuclear detonation or something like that. I don't know. don't know what it's going to be. But uh, I'm not the only one that's saying that I, I do think that something is, is very close to happening. And when I see things like this, from what I've, in my experience, a headline that says you ain't seen nothing yet, and, of course, what they're talking about here on the surface, they're talking about, well, you know, if, in other words, if we think the immigration influx is bad now, then what they're saying here is we ain't seen nothing yet. So, in other words, are we getting ready to get invaded even on a greater scale than what we, what we already uh, have experienced now? And... Um, yeah, you know, and and that you know it's uh, it's disturbing, and uh, because you know I hate to say, but you know Obama has a video on YouTube where he made a comment. I think it was at the uh, uh, early point of his second election or latter point of his first uh, term, where he said uh, something about um, it's raining men. Look up, look up, uh, type in that. That quote, it's raining men, or Obama, comma, it's raining men on YouTube. And listen to what he's saying there. Uh, it's raining men. Okay, what does that mean? Is there, there's going to be paratroopers dropping out of airplanes? Or, or, or you know, is, is this this influx of immigrants that are coming in from South America, which a number of people are saying and has uh, ISIS members and, you know, Islamic uh uh, insur insurgents and what have you, uh, you know, coming in along with them. And so are these, you know, are these future sleeper cells that are posi positioning themselves for something that's getting ready to happen? And uh, I'll tell you what, it, it just, time just goes so by, uh, goes by so quick on these broadcasts because I really wanted to get into the, uh, I wanted to get into the time that I was in the hospital where I was put into a an involuntary uh, psychological evaluation, and um, I would like to. I, I think I will just go ahead and try to go over that because I do have about seven or eight minutes left in the call. So exiting from the the message there or the warning about uh, some upcoming event or this increase in electro electromagnetic frequencies that uh, are being aimed and and broadcast around the world to increase the the uh, domestic around the world and, and different chaotic events. All of that is, is to create this chaos so that they can find their order, this order out of chaos that they want to get. So that's what that's all, that's all about. But um, anyway, back in uh, uh, the first part of 2000 and uh, let's see, what was that, 2012, I believe, or 2013, uh, I was put in the hospital uh, for an involuntary psychological evaluation. And uh, I did want to just go over a couple of uh, things that happened while I was in there. And one thing that, uh, or several things that happened, is one thing, they tried to get me on medication while I was in there. Of course, I haven't taken medication for years. And I asked them what the reason was for that. And, of course, they gave me some general term that, you know, they said that I was psychotic. And I said, well, can you narrow that down just a little bit? You know, that's a, that's a diagnosis there, and which they could, you know. And, of course, I resisted there for about a day. And then finally, after this one nurse, I called her Nurse Ratchet, or kind of think of her as Nurse Ratchet. And uh, she basically coerced me into you know, start taking medication. And I think I took it for a day, and then I, I told her that I wanted to talk to a doctor before I took any more. So finally I did, I did get a chance to talk to a doctor, and, and he told me that I didn't have to take it. So anyway, I quit taking that, and so that was the end of that story. They will try to get you on medication. Now, this nurse ratchet, she had on these real squeaky shoes, and only one of the shoes would squeak, and it sounded like a penguin. And, of course, 
And she, when she would work the night shift, she would walk up and down the aisles, and you could hear her out there in the hallway. And it just it was like, <laughs> if you were having trouble sleeping or if you were even being hit by weapons that were being used for sleep deprivation, well, that was just further uh, salt in the wound, so to speak. And um, so that was another thing that, uh, you know, that was going on. And uh, let me see what... Uh, what else do I have here? I've got uh, I've only got three minutes left in the call here. Um, I tell you what I may do I may just go ahead and, at the end of this call I'll just go ahead and end this call and and open it back up uh, and start another broadcast uh, immediately after this. In other words, I'll just relaunch another episode and that way. I can go ahead and get the rest of this information in because I'm definitely not going to be able to get all this in tonight and uh, because there's more to talk about about me going into the hospital and what have you. But uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and continue as long as I do have a, a few minutes here left. And uh, so I'm looking at my notes here. I don't want to get into that story about the book just yet because that, that, is, that is quite a bit more involved. And... Um, but uh, let's see. Okay, but one thing that happened is they brought in a chaplain, and this chaplain, he, uh, you know, he had this message, and he started talking about uh, things that were very provocative to my. They knew, in other words, they understand, you know, where I stood on my beliefs as a Christian and what have you. And he came in and started talking about all of all of these different doctrines and, and things like that 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 he knew would, would push my buttons, okay? And, uh, of course, I don't want to get into the doctrinal, doctrinal differences on that here, but that's another thing they'll do. They just do all of these different things to try to push your buttons. Of course, they're using remote neural monitoring on you so they know what you're thinking, they know what your, your, your past is, and, um, and that, that's, that's what they do. And, of course, they're, they're trying to provoke you to go off so that they can further... Uh, Know, keep you in there longer or put you under medication and um, and basically you know just uh, take complete control of you because once they put you on medication like that at that point they're really trying to create a Manchurian candidate out of you uh, not necessarily everyone but uh, a number uh, especially the men I do believe that they're C okay and then uh, uh, of course they had a group therapy session and there again, and they had uh, they had like uh, these different papers and and uh, projects that we were supposed to do these group projects, and they hand out these papers, and they have these different questions on them. And I'm going to save that because uh, if I start reading if I start reading that, then uh, I'll run out of time. Uh, but anyway. You know, it. Uh, I think the total bill was uh, about five thousand dollars. It was over five thousand dollars, and of course, I don't have insurance. And they did. Uh, I think they did knock off uh, on that. But still, you know, the point of the matter is, is that I had no business being in there. And so, whatever you know, it, it just, it just, it's complete. It's just completely wrong for me to be in there in the first place, uh, because we know as targeted individuals that. You know we're not we're not mentally ill. That all of the stuff that's happening is very real. And so I'm going to go ahead and end the call here because I am just have a few seconds left. I thank I thank you for listening in, and I will go ahead and end this call, and then I'll go ahead and open up another call immediately following. Okay. Well, thank you all for joining back in tonight, and uh, I'm continuing on in what I was talking about earlier with the my trip into the hospital, okay, my 72-hour involuntary psychiatric evaluation. And um, so let me go ahead and get on into that a little bit further And now that I have a little more time because that half an hour just goes by so quickly that uh, that it's really difficult to to really to it and uh, talk, uh, talk in depth about what, what really went on. So what I'd like to talk about first on that is, as I was saying, uh, 
when I went in and I actually went, it was actually a 72 hour involuntary psychi- psychiatric evaluation. But I ended up staying for five days, I believe. I don't think it was five or six days. But anyway, and I didn't realize, I mean, that was, that was ignorance on my part. That, for one thing, I didn't realize I was going to have to pay for it. Okay, now I have had, uh, fortunately, I have had some help paying, paying for that. And, um, but anyway, uh, it was, uh, it was very expensive. And I was looking at the bill. Let's see. But yeah, that was, uh, that was in January of 2012 when I was in. It was actually the last week of January 2012. And um, it was Clark Memorial Hospital. So, but so they have these group therapy sessions. And what they did to me was they had all of these pre-established questions typed out on the sheet of paper. Of course, they gave everyone that was in the session they gave uh, they handed these out to each individual person and but a, a lot of these questions are loaded okay do you understand you know, you know what i'm saying when i say loaded they were loaded for me now they they're, some of these could have been loaded for someone else too that i'm well, you know i wouldn't be aware of but they're they're loaded and of course i'm not going to tell you how they're loaded um because you know that's one cue with that they attack you in areas that you are sensitive about, okay? In other words, our past life, things we've done in the past that, you know, now we're, you know, we're, you know, we've repented of those things, okay? But that's how the devil works. I mean, he accuses you. He tries to bring those things back up, and he tries to wear you down. And, of course, I I talk about that, that, when these things started happening to me, you know, I began to really get serious with my relationship with the Lord and and my prayer life, and uh, I began reading the scriptures, and I've learned more about the scriptures and, and who, who Jesus Christ is, and through all of this gang stalking than I, I would have uh, in 30 years of living like I was before these things started happening. But the first question on here, it says social networking. It says one sign of emotional health is the ability to communicate and interact positively with others, someone in the room that it fits. And so we had these different questions that we had to find answers for, and we had to write a name in the blank spot. And um, so there was interaction that had to be taken place. Pardon me just one second. I'm going to take a sip of water here. Question is, says number one, favorite drink is Big Red. The second question is, has to be or has been to at least five states. The third question is, love loves Chinese food. The fourth, the fourth is, has the same favorite color as mine. Five, has broken more than one bone in their life. That's a strange one. Has the most pets. Has the most children. Likes country music. Is allergic to bee stings. Now, that's a, that's a, this is a really big one right there. Takes medication at night to sleep. Okay, so that's that's ten questions, and of course, I had to find someone in the room that I could uh, put these names in. Okay, well, has been to five states. That's that's one right there because of the number five, and I'm going to get into that here just because I shared that on. Um, my Facebook, with my Facebook group and several Facebook groups that are about targeted, about organized gang stalking. And 
So the number five is significant there. Question three is loves Chinese food. Do I, I like? I mean, it, it's not my favorite, but I like actually I like authentic Mexican food better than anything. Has the same favorite color as mine. That you know, I don't know. Has broken more than one bone in their life. Well, I've certainly done that. Has the most pets. Has the most children, which I did have the most children. This is an edit of the audio. After listening to the audio, I realized that there was an important section cut out of the recording. And although I, I really don't understand exactly why, but it, what it had to do when I, it gets to the part here where the question is, likes country music, at that point the audio becomes uh, inaudible and you can't really hear, as well as a fairly large section of the audio is cut out of it. And it goes into the question following that, which is, is allergic to bee stings? And this was the most significant, or one of the more significant questions on this uh, this questionnaire is because I am allergic to bee stings. And uh, giving this further thought, I really don't appreciate them letting the other people know in this group that I am allergic to bee, st uh, to bee stings. And though this may be somewhat, um, well, I'm not going to say paranoid, but just in light of the fact that we are targeted individuals, I would rather not uh, expose uh, any type of weaknesses uh, that we have, especially anything that's related to our health. And I did it one time here where a targeted individual was or, or did have a hive of bees put in her home. And although I can't remember exactly where, I'm thinking it was the duck work. And um, for someone to do that to me with me being allergic to bees or bee stings, well, that could be significant. So anyway, that portion was cut out of the audio. It was in, indiscernible or inaudible. And uh, this is an editorial. This is an inserted editorial where, where I have gone back and reread this and made some further points and clarifications on this topic. But um, And then I'll go ahead and read number 10, which is the last question. And it was takes medication at night to sleep. And I'll go ahead and make a further comment on that as well because, as I said, that these questions are loaded and that uh, although I don't take any type of prescription medication or over-the-counter medication, I do occasionally drink a glass of wine to help me go to sleep. Now, I haven't, I haven't done that in a number of years, but when the targeting started early on, I did uh, take, uh, I did drink a glass of wine to help me sleep because uh, as us targeted individuals know we do get the attacks uh, as far as the sleep deprivation and it is very difficult for some of us to sleep with uh, these uh, the weapons that are being used against us and the different tactics of noise campaigns and things of that nature so anyway I'll go ahead and stop there with this will be the end of the editorial this portion was edited in and inserted into the audio Thank you. Likes cutting is bee stings. Pose that, um, well, actually, there probably was a questionnaire when I filled out the initial paperwork that you probably have to list what you're allergic to, <laughs> and which I, I do, I do list that because I mean it's the truth. I am allergic to bee stings. It takes medication at night to sleep, but anyway. That's about all I can say there. Going on to sheet number two, it says, Notice how you feel during this activity. What feelings does it bring up? Why do you believe this is true? How do you decide who to approach? What was your strategy for obtaining information? They have four different, uh, four different questions here. It says, one is, what are examples of support systems that you might have? Okay, well, all of the, I looked at all of these, and all of these are actually difficult questions for targeted individuals, okay? Because the fact of the matter is, is that we don't have, we don't have the normal support channels that, I mean, that, that's the program we're in, is they try to take away our support 
our, our support network. They try to take away our support system. And so question number one is, what are examples of support systems that you might have? And so the, it's a barb. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's a knife in the wound or salt in the wound, you know. Two is, how do we develop new support systems if we do not have any? Well, how do you develop new support systems if you're a targeted individual, if you don't have any? When you've been alienated from your family and your friends and your work associates and your community and your church, the only people we have are the other targeted individuals. So, you know, what is that without, it was, in other words, if I were to write the truth, would I write that on this paper? Well, the truth is that I don't have any because of this program that I'm in. But, you know, we have to play along with the system, which I did. And I just, I just, I wrote in, pray for support, ask family, friends, and neighbors. Well, <laughs> my family was the one that put me in the hospital. Uh, you know, bless their hearts. Three, what are barriers to developing some support? Well, there's another one. What are barriers to developing some support? Well, first of all, is this system of covert organized gang stalking that is created to isolate and ostracize people in the community. That's exactly what this program is. It is a barrier. It is a barrier. To support systems. Okay. Number four, what are some solutions to overcome these barriers? Yeah, and you know, and the thing about it is they know this. They know what this does. They know what kind of psychological uh hoops this this that this is for targeted individuals when you go in under these psychiatric evaluations. Okay, but that's what they're trying to do is they're trying to provoke you. They're trying to push all of your buttons. They're trying to further psychologically break you down because this is a program of slow kill, soft kill, silent kill, slow torture, death by a thousand cuts. But while I was in there, the, of course, the rooms are double, double occupancy, and they brought in this guy that was in the bed, in the other bed in the room, and he was a perp, obviously. And he gave me this book. The title of the book is The Five People You Meet in Heaven. And what it's about is about this, uh, well, I'll just read just a little bit here. It says, it says, Eddie, this guy's first name, the main character, his name is Eddie. Well, my first name is Edward. You know, so the, so the guy that's in the bed, you know, in the room, the, uh, the, the person I'm sharing the room with in the hospital, he gives me a book. that the main character has the first name is my my first name. It says Eddie is a grizzled war veteran who feels trapped in a meaning in a meaningless life of phys- of fixing rides at a seaside amusement park. As the park has changed over the years from the loop to loop to the pipeline plunge, so too has Eddie changed from optimistic youth to embittered old age. His days are a dull routine of work, loneliness, and regret. You know, I mean, everything about this book is just further nudging to drive someone over the edge. I mean, even when you read this, even when I read this now, 
you know, he, they're talking about he's a, a meaningless life. He feels trapped in a meaningless life. Even the names of the ride, the loop, the loop, to the pipeline plunge. The pipeline plunge, okay. Well, well, let me just be frank, ladies and gentlemen, but is that the suicide ride they want me to take? Plunge? So too has Eddie changed from optimistic youth to embitter, embittered old age. So I'm in, I'm embittered old age. His days are full, or his days are a dull routine of work, loneliness, and regret. That's what they want my life to be. That's what they want my... This is a form of witchcraft. There's a number of things. I've read the book for as as, as much as I could. I mean, I, I did. I, I went from be, be, beginning to end. But anyway, he died and went to heaven. That's the name of the book, The Five People You Meet in Heaven. And what happened was he was hit by a Ferris wheel car or seat. A seat came off of one of the rides and landed on him. And I think there was, if I remember correctly, I think there was a young girl in the that's what it was. There was a young girl in the ride, and he tried to he tried to save her. But the five people you meet in heaven, this is what happened to me early on in my targeting. I called a radio station to talk about this, and the radio host, he said, well, I'm going to let you be anonymous. And I didn't request to be anonymous. And I didn't think anything about it, but he said, I'm going to call you five. And he told me it was the number for grace. Oh, well, that's nice of you. Well, we know that five is also the number for Satan, the pentagram. And that's what they do is they demonize targeted individuals. And so they've been calling me five from the get-go. I found a, one of those, I found a billiard ball in my house, not a gen, not a official, but one of those rubber ones that you play on a small table, and it was the number five. And the book that this guy handed, gave me in the hospital, is titled The Five People You Meet in Heaven. And what they've done with the title is they've made the text or the color of the text different on the five. It's the five in heaven. People you meet is a different color. So it says the five in heaven. So this was a form of um, forecasting, a form of death forecasting, a form of witchcraft. And then another thing, he came in with a back brace on, nylon cords. And he came up to me one evening, I think after he had been there a day, and he was showing me these cords on this back brace that he was wearing. And what he said was, he said, do you think that they will allow me to have this back brace in here with these cords on it, exactly what he was doing. Because he was bigger than I was. I mean, I wasn't I wasn't intimidated by him by any means. I wasn't afraid of him. Nor was I afraid of his covert, subtle threat there that he could use those cords to strangulate me in the middle of the night. Because they are not supposed to let you have any type of strings or cords or instruments that can be used as a weapon. So 
what they did, they allowed him to have this back brace, which it was a sticky way of getting these cords into my room to where he could use them as a form of as a as a as a threat that was another psychological uh, threat that they used against me or that they perpetrated this guy perp the lunchroom where there were several other perps in there one thing in particular was they brought some guy in in there that had kind of a, a five o'clock shadow beard and mustache and he was wearing a hoodie and of course he wore the hoodie in the cafeteria now they finally told him that he couldn't wear the hat he had to put his he had to take his hoodie off but he sat over there across the way from me and of course he looked like Gibson uh, movie about Jesus and, and the passion where he had on that hood, you know, that hoodie, or or who is that guy in Star Wars that wore the hood, that the real evil guy, Seth or whatever his name is. But that's what he looked like. So that was another that was another type, uh, form of uh, psychological harassment. And then what they did was they had this. lunchroom hand washing hygiene demonstration where before every before they brought us our meals the lunchroom was crowded they brought in a bunch of the nurses and the clericals and the orderlies and they were all standing around the walls and of course there were a number of the high ranking ones up front there that were doing this demonstration and they were talking about how to properly wash your hands I mean, it was ridiculous. So they went around the room with this uh, sanitizing lotion, and they squirted it on, uh, on everyone's hands. And then, you know, everybody's there, you know, wiping their hands. And just as soon as I wiped my hands and that solution started to dry, but whatever that is that makes your ear itch, and that's one of the things that they have gotten me with from the get-go is that, that ear itch. And, I mean, it's it's extremely itchy. But I knew exactly what was going on. They wanted, they wanted me, after I had just cleaned my hands, that they were all up in there watching. They wanted me to reach for my ear and and stick my clean finger dirty ear. Now, I don't know what they were going to do. They probably weren't, they probably wouldn't do anything. But I knew, I knew exactly what they were doing. And of course, I just, I endured the itch. I did not, you know, I, I just, I wasn't going to fall for their tricks. But there was just a number, there were so many different things in there that went on. The guy that was in the room, the other guy that was in the room, the co-occupant, he would talk to me, and of course he would include all kinds of different content in his conversation that was related to aspects and dimensions and details of my life. Like he told me how much money he earned at his salary, or how much his salary was at the place that he worked, which incidentally he worked at the same place as a close family member of mine. And then the salary that he made was the same salary as a family member of mine. And this was not, I mean, this family member of mine has a very high salary. I mean, it's not it's not a six-digit salary, but it's a high five-digit salary. And he told me how much his salary was, and it was exactly, you know, to the, to the thousand. And so there were many, many things like that that they they did while I was in there. And uh, 
another thing they did was they had a recreation center and they had a ping pong table. They had pool table, ping pong table and I'm fairly decent. I mean you you know, at ping pong, probably better than average, but just barely. And they brought in some guy and of course he was he was good, you know. And uh, so we started, we had this ping pong game going, and I could just sense everything. Of course, everybody started standing around, and there was this competition going on. And he was there to kind of put me in my place. And, uh, I mean, he was a nice guy and everything. About all I had to share about my experience in the hospital, I do think that the book, the five people you meet in heaven, which he, the guy actually, he left me a note. I, I don't know what that was all about. Maybe, maybe there's, uh, we're not supposed to, you're not supposed to receive gifts from others or something like that. I have given a book and my, oh, that's right. He gave me a magazine too. I forgot about that magazine. I think I still have that. So that's enough on that. Um, Kind of going back to what I was talking about earlier. On the tinnitus and the the increase in electronic frequencies that I believe is happening. I did say that I would send, you know, that this message was essentially a warning. And that, uh, that, you know, I would encourage targeted individuals to pay attention and to look for an increase in intensity and assaults, especially especially in the electronic in the electronic uh, harassment side of it, because I do believe that they are getting ready to do something. I think they're turning up the volume on the electromagnetic frequencies that are affecting the mood of the population as a whole. And I'm seeing things in the news, different articles and what have you, where people are saying that um, there are more and more suicides happening, more and more domestic violence events, road rage, different things like that. And, um, I mean, I hope I'm wrong, but that's that's what my gut is telling me that's getting ready to happen, is that they are getting ready to turn up the heat on us even more so. And uh, when we look at that one headline there on the Drudge Report, and what does it say? It says, you ain't seen nothing yet. And uh, and so with that, I'll end the show for this broadcast. I thank you for listening. Tune in in the following broadcast. Everyone be safe.